Welcome back everyone. I'm super excited. I have something fun to share with you guys today. I have a sneak peek preview beta version of the new application from Skylum Software. This is Illuminar Neo. Skylum were kind enough to sponsor this video. They sent me the beta version to share with you guys and I want to look at some new features in here because it's pretty impressive. So first let's start with the obvious. So what is Luminar Neo? Neo is the latest application in Skylum's family of Luminar software. You guys probably remember last year when I was talking about Luminar AI when that was released. Luminar AI uses artificial intelligence to make the editing process a lot easier. Now, Luminar AI is designed for people who are probably new to image editing. It's what we call template-based. So you can start with the template and you can kind of learn what the edits are and you can make changes. You can make your own templates. And so there's a lot of power there. Luminar Neo is targeted at people who want to dig a little bit deeper. And there's something that's really special about this that I really love. I'm going to use an example to show you what I'm talking about. So here's an image that I have made a bunch of edits on. So if I open this up, I go over to the edit tab at the top of the screen, you're going to see the as expected super clean interface that Skylum are known for. Our tools are over here on the right hand side of the screen. There's also a tab for history. Now, the way that software editing applications typically work is they keep a history, but it's all sequential. So in other words, I might move the exposure. The next thing I do is change the white balance. I increase my shadow detail or my highlights, and it's going to keep track of all these in the history tab. This is why I typically don't use the history tab because anytime you have to roll back to something that you did very early on in the process, it just takes you back to that state. You lose all of your other edits and that's the problem with sequential rendering. So what Skylum have done with Neo, and I'm going to show you this in the history tab here. If I go over to history, I'm going to click on there. We still have that sequential order, but they call this parametric sequencing in that all of my tools are here. It's not states. So I can see that it starts from the bottom up. I started with the develop module. I made some changes there. I made some enhancements. I increase the structure, I use the new relight tool, so on and so forth. I can go back at any time and I can make changes. So let's say that the white balance is just a little too yellow for me. I can go back to the develop module here. I can scroll down to color and I can bring back my temperature on that and make it more blue. And it keeps all my other edits in place. So this is actually a really smart way of organizing this history tab because I'm not doing it by states. I'm able to go back into the specific tool and make my edits. And so this makes it very powerful. In terms of technology, Luminar Neo brings over many of the technologies that we have seen in their other applications, things like being able to control all aspects of portrait using artificial intelligence, things like the skin enhancement, body AI. Of course, there's sky replacement also, and we do have the 3D depth map interpretation with artificial intelligence that drive things like atmosphere AI, as well as portrait bokeh AI. But now we have a new tool that kind of takes this to the next level. So we're going to look at the new relight tool. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to control lighting in a three-dimensional space. Now, photographs are not three-dimensional. They are two-dimensional. They are flat, but they represent a three-dimensional space. So what the artificial intelligence technology that Skylum have programmed into this does is it allows us to actually create a 3D map into that space and now change the lighting around. I want to show you how this works. So I've got an example image here and this image is a little dark so we're going to go into edit. It is supposed to be somewhat moody but I'm going to bring my exposure up just a little bit and you can see that we've got a dandelion and I've just got some sunlight coming through some trees behind it. Now what you probably don't realize is there's a house back here and some other things and it's just because the exposure is a little bit low. So what I can do with three-dimensional light here is if I go down to the relight tool, it's under creative, and you're going to see that we've got a couple sliders and some advanced settings as well. So what I can do is I can adjust the brightness in the foreground or brightness near. And what this is going to do is bring up that dandelion in the foreground. I can also make that darker. You can also adjust the far brightness too. So whatever's in the background, now you can start to see that house come up a little bit. You can also change where that point of depth is. So I can bring that forward and backwards. So if I bring it up towards the foreground or I can move that in the background, background. So I can use these sliders and this was a little, this looks pretty good here. I don't like the brightness far. I want to bring that down because I want this a little bit abstract, but we can bring our brightness up in the foreground. Mess with my depth a little bit and that's starting to look pretty good. So what this is allowing us to do is now actually control lighting within a three-dimensional perceived space. We do have some advanced settings on this as well. I can control any haloing I might have in the image. We also have independent warmth balance in either the near field or the far field. So if I want to warm up the foreground, you can bring that up. If I want to warm up the background, I can bring that up. I actually want it a little cooler in the front and I might mess with my depth just a little bit here and that's starting to look 
pretty good. We also have some additions to the erase tool functionality. Now remember that Luminar Neo is content aware, and this is part of the algorithm that's written around it with artificial intelligence. And this is going to give it an enormous amount of power moving forward. So in other words, it can recognize the sky in an image. It can recognize the human face. It's 3D aware. It can also start to recognize objects like cars, trees, boats, other things that might be in the scene. Well, what's really cool is there are some additions in the erase tool now I want to show you that are very cool. So if I go into this image here, and there's not a lot of editing. I want to do this, maybe a few things. Let's go into the edit menu and I'm going to go under develop. Let's bring up the exposure just a little bit and I'll bring up my smart contrast a bit too. I mean, it's a moody image, but we've got a red light in the bottom. But let's say that I'm not a big fan of all these power lines moving through the image. Well, what we can do now is if I go down to the erase tool here, the, we now have two options for objects removal. I can remove power lines and also dust spots. So let's go ahead and remove the power lines. It's going to think for a second and boom, they are gone. Like seriously, have you ever tried to go in and actually brush each one of those out by hand? I mean, it can be done. It just takes forever. Another tool that solves a very annoying problem is dust specs on the sensor. Let me give you an example. I've got an image of a fairly dramatic sky and particularly when you start using things like structure and dehaze, it tends to bring these out. But what I'm talking about down here, especially at this bottom right hand corner are these dust specs. You can see these. This is actually dust on the sensor. This is an enormous pain to have to go in, especially when you have a whole bunch of images that were taken with dust on the sensor. Well, now not anymore. We can go to the erase tool here and I can simply go down and say remove dust spots. It's going to think for a second, analyze the image and boom, they are gone. The whole point of Luminar Neo is to leverage technology to give you more power in editing and make edits much faster. I want to give you an example of an image that I took it didn't work. It's not a great image. And I realized when I was playing with this beta version of Luminar Neo that I actually could rescue a lot of it. And I want to show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to go with this image here. This is an image I shot in Michigan last summer. I was staying in this house. I looked out the window and here's this boat coming by. I had my camera with me. There's a lot of things that don't work about this image. There's a car in the way. There's a power line in the way. It's really dark. I had a 50 millimeter prime lens, so it really wasn't close enough to get the compression that I wanted. But there are some things that we can do in Neo that actually can rescue this image a bit. So I'm going to take you step by step through here. It's all very quick. So what we're going to do is go over to the edit tab. We're going to start with the development module here and I'm going to bring my exposure up a little bit. I don't want to blow out the sky back there, but we're going to go ahead and adjust the smart contrast. This is one of those sliders that does multiple things under the hood while you're adjusting. So it saves time. So let's go ahead and close develop. The other one that I like to start with on every image is enhance. If we go with the accent, it's going to bring out those trees a little bit. Now watch when I turn this slider up, it brings in the foreground as well. Now, I liked the idea of using that window and shooting this from inside to do a subframing thing where I had the boat framed into another part of the image being the window frame. So the problem is, is that with depth of field, what's in the foreground is out of focus. So we want to be very careful with that because it's back focused and it just is not a good look. It's distracting. So I'm going to bring accent back a little bit because I don't want too much of that there. Now, the other thing that I can do is let's first of all, let's get rid of this car. If I go down to the erase tab, I just hate that. It's distracting. Just my brush radius just a little bit. And what we're going to do is go in and I'm just going to paint out the car here and that little thing over there. We're going to go ahead and hit erase. It's going to think for a second. Bam, the car is gone. Let's get rid of the power lines as well. Let's just click remove power lines. It's going to analyze the image, find the power lines, gone. Next thing I want to do is actually go down to the new tool with Relight and we're going to work with this. Now remember that Relight essentially analyzes the image and comes up with a 3D depth map. So I can control my lighting and color temperature in the foreground, midsection and the background as well. So what we're going to do is for the brightness near, which is where you start to see this lamp and some of the sun coming in, I'm going to bring that down. We're going to go way down with that and it's already looking pretty good it's because remember it's distracting. So if I can get that lower, then I can adjust that. So brightness far. Perfect. I can bring up that foliage a little bit. Just want to make sure I'm not clipping highlights here, but it looks okay. And you can also adjust the depth so I can push that further back. That's about where I want it because I don't want you to notice too much of the foreground. It's just there to frame things in. I'm going to go under advanced and let's adjust the warmth on the far side of the image here where the boat is back there. It makes it look a little more like an evening shot there. It's looking pretty good. And the last thing I want to do is just adjust my crop a little bit. 50 millimeters was a little wide for this shot, so I just have too much content that doesn't do anything in the image. So I just want to get it down into this actual part where the boat is being framed in here. So if I go to the crop tool up here, we can actually just click and drag on the side here. I'm going to bring this in a bit. Let's bring this up a little bit so it's framed in pretty good. 
That is looking good. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's close the crop tool. And uh, yeah, we're looking good. So quick before and after. Here is before the image. <laughs> We've got a car and a power line and not very good lighting. Here's after. Actually kind of works. Another feature that I'm really excited about with Luminar Neo is the ability to work in layers finally. Now this is going to be pretty game changing, I think, for Neo. Now it's not in the beta version, unfortunately, but it will be there on release. So we'll be able to work in layers, layering raw images, as well as PNG files with transparency transparencies in them. So this is going to enable a lot of things that we couldn't do previously. And so that's one thing to note that will be there when Luminar Neo is released. And then the first major update to Neo, which of course will be free, will add the functionality of being able to use Mask AI. And one I'm excited about is portrait background removal. So we've already have the ability to kind of simulate Boca using the portrait tools that are in here. It can recognize the face, it sees where the fall off is, and we can blur out that background. Well, using the same masking technique, it can actually replace the background, which I think is going to be a big deal for a lot of photographers. So there's a lot of cool features coming in Luminar Neo. This is a really powerful image editor. It's designed to help creatives like you and me bring our visual stories to life. So if you want to check it out, it's not available just yet, but you can pre-order. The advantage of pre-ordering is, is you're going to get it at its lowest price. The price will go up as it comes closer to launch. It's going to launch in the next couple months. They're saying this winter. So you might want to check that out. If you have already purchased one of Luminar's applications, such as Luminar AI. They will give you a loyalty discount. So use the link below, see if you're eligible. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Super excited about this. Happy to share it with you guys today. Catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.